Hey everybody, welcome back. Lots to cover. Dell's earnings out. Been a pretty wild night. Right now you're sitting at 4.15. We're going to go through this in some detail. We're going to start with the beginning. We're going to be super technical with what's going on out there, specifically for tomorrow to get through PCE and what you need to know. First and foremost, we can all see the undercut right here and then the rally over. What I don't like is this kind of behavior. In other words, you break down and then the wick. Wicks are price rejection. Look at how that fits perfectly right in there. So all we did was undercut the low and fill in a gap, meaning that people here that before did not want to sell are now sellers. That's not ideal. I'm also not crazy about this pop and drop. It was kind of a wild day to say the least, and a lot of this was based upon the GDP data that came out. Now, one of the things I really like to do is take that 830 bar, as always, and we want to mark it off. And the reason for that is that tells us where the algorithms are, the high frequency traders, and what they consider important levels. And I'm surprised a lot of people don't do this. But what's fascinating is if you mark those levels off, you can see how they start becoming support and resistance. For example, the bottom of that level all of a sudden became resistance right around when? Around 330. And you can just say, boom, boom, right into it. And then what you do, you just fell from there. So it's telling you that you have an issue. You can even see it in here. Once you broke through these issues, watch what happens. Test, fails, test, 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 failed. And once you failed here, people knew like, okay, we lost the algo. And once you lose those guys there, it's pretty much on. And that's what happened. We just co collapsed from there, tried to rally back up to the neckline and then collapsed again. I can't stress these levels enough. I keep preaching these levels and you'll see it again tomorrow with PCE. It, it's kind of funny, but everyone's like, oh, you can't win because of the algorithms and high frequency traders. Well, they're hiding in plain sight. So when you see these levels, just mark them off. Specifically dated information. Let's look at this GDP information. Now, what we're gonna just see right here is the actual versus the forecast. So this is the actual as to what's come out versus what we were forecasted. So it was actually better across the board and actually PCE pricing came in weaker than expected. So this was a pretty much bonanza for it, the data that we were looking for. Now, pending home sales, and you can see this data pending home sales month over month, what we were looking for versus what came out was significantly lower. So we saw that hit the market a little bit in those groups, but that was really it. Overall, this was great data. Now tomorrow, we have the PCE coming out year over year core. You need to see all the data right here. I mean, it's obviously gonna be pretty important stuff. So you're gonna to wanna to watch PCE tomorrow. That'll come out at 8.30, then Chicago PMI. And then you're gonna have a weak light volume market in general because you have the long holiday weekend. Keep that in mind. It's kind of why we were light today as well. Now let's get back to the details because there's a lot to cover in a short time to do it. We can obviously see this retest. Again, we note that we're gonna watch these levels. We're gonna clean all this off right now. We're just gonna jump right over into the daily and we're just gonna pop in the simplest of index oscillators and indicators. That's a, a 12, a 55, and a 22. Look at the volume today on this dip. I'm happy for it. I'm not gonna complain about it. And I think you're leaning more towards the S&P than the NASDAQ right now. And I'll show you how you can tell that. Now, this is the NASDAQ divided by the S&P. So this is NASDAQ relative performance to the SPY. One of the things I use very frequently is just how are we doing performance versus underperformance. And whenever the NASDAQ is underperforming by the 55 SMA, you have a weak market. And we've continually had that weak market. We rallied back up to it and we're just getting weaker and weaker. So the S&P is continuing to outperform the NASDAQ and we're under that institutional support. It's just a guide that lets me know like, okay, we are leaning towards non-tech names right now, which is the case. I mean, you can go through those names and see what's winning, non-tech names. It's not rocket science, but this is a nice way to use this. And when I'm under there, I just get a little cautious. What really makes me cautious is when we start grinding down. You see how this is turning? And if you ever wanna know if a line is actually turning down or not, all you can do is just watch the numbers. And if they start declining, you can just see that, yes, you're starting to turn down a little bit and you wanna be cognizant of that. Just like here when we turned down a little bit and then we just started lifting again. But we all know that if you took a look from March 5th on to about May 14th, it was a tougher market. Not saying that you can't trade tech, but you just have to understand where you are. What this allows me to do is take a shorter term volatility indicator when looking at tech and saying, okay, let me just take what I can get and get out of the way versus, oh, I'm gonna hold these and build them. Right? That's kind of how I look at the meaning. Go back to January 23 and you can see the difference. You see I touched here in November, flipped. And then as long as you're above it, you're fine. I don't need it to rally. I just need it to at least be doing as well as the S&P. If I'm doing as well, I'll be flat. For example, if I took this off and you just looked at this, you would just go, oh, okay, I'm just doing as well. Meaning if I'm in this area, 
of interest from here over, we could just say I'm doing as well all in here, right? But when that changes and you see that dynamic change, you just wanna pay attention to it. And right now you're at the upper end of that band and it's starting to roll, try to get over, rejection. And that's telling you that we have underperformance. Something as simplistic as that will also let you know that you could put yourself in a position like, okay, maybe I'll hold my tech shorts a little bit longer, which is something I'll show you a little bit later today. But the biggest issue that I have right now, and I'm just gonna show it, is obviously everyone can see the breakdown, the rally, and then we drop. Now there's a couple different ways to look at this. Number one, the first way to look at this is to take an anchored VWAP and drop it from the top. That's gonna to give you the peak level. From that peak level, we're going to sit here and we're gonna look straight across and realize that we are still above peak anchored VWAP. What don't we wanna do? I'm glad you asked. We do not wanna close under peak anchored VWAP. Should we do that, we're gonna have an issue. And that's something that we certainly want to address because we don't like issues, right? So we're going to want to be aware of that and go from there. This is just an indicator that I want uh, to have down here. It's why it's aligned that way. So I want to make sure that I don't have that issue. That's the first thing that you should be doing on your graph. So I'm going to give you a couple things on your NASDAQ graph that you should use. In my opinion, you don't have to. You don't even have to watch this. But you are. So here we are. So here's your point of control. Look how you rejected your point of control there. Okay? So... That's your value high. Some people use the value high, value low. I'll say I don't use it, but it worked out pretty perfectly, didn't it? But if we take a look at this level right here, look at that point of control. Okay, so point of control is just very simply the area that what? That's where the majority of stock is owned. It's different than the, 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 the volume weighted average price. Long day, guys. I'm not gonna have time to edit this, but uh, you're gonna have to deal with the, uh, the flubs. So as you're coming straight across here, you just take all this and that gets you that. All right, got it? Good. This is where everybody tried the most. Now, if you just drop this down and you take a look at this and you start looking at those levels, you're gonna go, huh, that's interesting. So here's the undercut of that. And then there's the rally over. Okay, this is where you were, right? last evening and this is where you are today. So you're gonna to wanna to watch that line tomorrow. Now there's more to it than just that. Um, and there's something pretty significant today. So then if I take all this and I overlay this with the 55 and I realize like, okay, I'm also below the 12 and the 55 and the only thing holding me left is this anchored VWAP and this 22 and the volume starting to pick up. It's not great. So now if I clean all this off and we just drop this back to a bear chart, you can see what they did. And this is the other thing that I do not like at all. Do you see how they pop you over right here? So they pop you over, they fill you full of hopes and dreams, and then what do they do? They smash them. And then once they broke that 474, which we've been talking about for over a week now, that was it, and they just took us straight down. So now what we have is we have the socks, and we can start seeing how that's rolling. Now the important thing about the socks for me is this control bar, and I'm gonna show you this. And this is how I view things, and maybe I view things a little bit differently, and that's okay. Everyone needs to view things how it works for them. So there's there's a lot of confusion like, this is the only way that things work. That's, that's not true. There is one way that I do things, and it works for me. And then there are other ways that people are like, I, I don't wanna do it that way. And it's okay, it doesn't mean that what they're doing is not gonna work. Now, on Tuesday, we talked about this bar and we talked about this piercing pattern. And I said, if we flip this area, then we have the ability to get to the top of this and then kind of build from there. That's not what happened. We didn't flip, we went sideways. And then what we did today is more troubling than anything. And I'll show you the pattern. So you can see them walking us down here and people will say, do you get this granular? And the answer is yes, I do. Um, and I'll show you where, where I'm going with this. So here's that bar. Now, whether or not you use the top of this or you use the opening price, I don't really care. But for this, we're gonna use the opening and the close. And what you're gonna note is you have this inside bar that's a doji in the middle of this bar that has to make a decision. And what you always like to do with these kinds of decisions, I hit these fib retracements and then I'll just drop a 50% line right there. And you can see that that was 50% inside that bar, pops over, complete Matumbo at that 50% line, and then you're not never got over. So if you ever have a control bar like this, and you're like, I wonder which way it's gonna go, forget FIB levels. The easiest thing to do is to say, if I drop a 50% line and I have a bar like this, if I'm not over that 50%, sellers are in charge. It, that is not subjective. It's not rocket science. If you, have a, if you have a range and you're selling towards the low end of that range by a 50% line, if you just think about it that way, you have sellers, all right? So don't overthink it, guys. The undercut here, which is perfect to get people and then rip. You know the rip, the dip and rip? No, that's not what we got. But what we did get was this, and this is what I don't like. I don't like when they take you over. It's just mean. 
and then they reverse it, drop you down, and now they're filling us in down here. Again, yeah, I do get this granular because I wanna know what they're doing. And they're doing this into the weekend, into PCE. So when we zoom in on this, that's what you have right now. And that's not groovy. And now you have the video out, so the question becomes, what do we do with this? Well, here's some of the things that are happening. The first thing that is hurting us is SMCI coming out and restating. They're going to restate their earnings. There's really no other way to say this. You don't halt your 10K, which is what they did, and say, we have an issue. We're gonna redo our 10K. You don't redo it because things are going well. They were called out on it. Now, I'm not one of these short seller fans of these types of reports, but candidly, they nailed this. Um, and they've nailed a couple things. Hindenburg's nailed a couple things. I can say whatever I want, but they've nailed a couple things. They nailed the IEP. They've nailed a couple others recently. Uh, they've certainly nailed this. Within 24 hours of this report hitting the street, they came out and halted issuing their 10K. But this dip, and then they cover. So usually what happens is these kinds of firms, like the Hindenburgs of the world, they have like an institutional subscriber base that has a clue that something's coming out sooner than later. And you'll always see these moves down before the original move. And that's what you're seeing here. Now, what happens is you flip, right? And then the news hits, okay? This was really fast and shows that there's a real problem. Um, even Goldman commented on it today. It was kind of interesting. Like they were they were just talking about it. And I agree, like you've never seen it. So we have this issue that, we, that we're seeing. And when you understand these issues, this gets all into the stool again, where you understand the macro, the fundamental, and the technicals, you can do exceptionally well with these kinds of trades because you know, like, well, wait a minute. If you're going to restate these earnings, how far back are you going, right? It's like if you're doing this, then you're opening it's, you're opening a can of worms. So essentially, you could be going all the way back to here where you beat expectations. So you can't trust any of the earnings that have just taken place over the past six months. You can't trust any of it anymore. You can't trust the, the beat. You can't trust any of it. You can't trust any of the earnings that are out. And when you're an institution, and that's kind of how I, I, I learned, not kind of, it's how I learned, um, how these guys think, they're not taking that risk. So once that news hits, that was it. And you can see the drop here. This is the first thing that happened. And what you always want to do is just drop an anchored VWAP to the first bar, just like you would earnings. Any event, just drop an anchored VWAP. See how it goes. How's that going? It never popped over. So once this hit, this was actually a trade that we did. It was actually a really easy trade. And we put a short on right into it because you know that there's no way that institutions got out on that one minute bar. Now you know that they're just gonna sell it and, and you know that it's gonna be bad. How do you know that? Because they're gonna have to restate earnings. You don't redo your 10K or delay a 10K again because it's gonna be so good, especially after an event like that. So all we're doing here is just walking this down, this trade over and over again. And this is a really bad event for AI, in my opinion. And I'll, I'll walk through that in a second, but I think this is an important trade to look at for us from a live trading perspective. And also you can see where I decided uh, to once we were in and we were killing it, where we rolled out the 470 puts and we put them into the 400s. Here, take a look at this. And then you're just falling apart. Nothing for me to do. Just watch and wait and just let it do its thing. Where could you find any kind of support? Let's watch 480 and see what that does. That's your first real level. I, I, I do think you're getting there today. So you're just falling apart. Right into that, I'm going to probably trim some. I trimmed right into that 480. Like right when it did that, I trimmed into that. I was up a decent amount. Just let the rest of that fall apart. There's nothing to do there with the rest of it. If it breaks 480, 460 is on the table. This thing can't hold. You're not going to hold. I'm going to buy some 470 puts and just hold them and see how it goes. I'm going to trade around them too. I'm already up three and a half dollars on those puts. Up six and a half, seven dollars on those puts. Done nothing with them. All right, I'm up twelve dollars on those puts. Trim some right into that. Watch 450 because if they get over 450, then you're going to start seeing some people close some stuff. I'm going to trim some right there just in case. You could bounce to 477 fast. So you're going to have to pull money out like there. Boom, over 450. Say it. So I'm pulling money out right here. I'm closing stock too. Right into that. 41.55 on those puts. I'm down to about half, guys. If you're trying to figure it out on everything, the puts, the stock, you might go to 414 today. Oof. 44 on those puts. Look at the stock now. 55 on those options. Into 14, I'm going to trim. 56 on those puts. I'm going to trim right here. I'm down to a third on everything. Yeah, I, I don't know that that's going to hold here, guys. I really don't. You could just keep falling. I'm rolling the rest of my, and I'm just leaving them on. I'm just going to take the risk. I'm not going to use a conventional stop. I'll get out if I want to. I think you're going to go through it. And I'm going to take the risk because I made a lot. So I'm going to risk it. Yep, there it goes. I paid 18, 22 on those options. Trimmed some of those puts up three. Only trimmed 20% of them. Trimmed more. Close over that bar, 419.88. And I'll be out of the entire trade 100%. I'd like to wait for a close. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get that or not.
Al, whatever percent out of everything. Thank you very much. This is why I scaled out down here just in case. I thought it would crack. Didn't. Thing that you might want to watch a couple times there. I think it's really important. Here's that 480, and you can kind of see that level. Um, I know I'm just going to leave it here for the hourly, but you can kind of see where you're at. Now, if I drop this down and we just come across and you'll see it right there as well. You can also see the level right here, the 493. So that's where you're battling and that's a major point. What do I think now? And I, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, I think you're up today because of short sellers and you're going into the weekend. I don't know why someone's going to look at this unless they are comfortable with the restatement. And I don't know how they could be from an institutional standpoint. So I think you're going to bonk around. So that's the first shoe that kind of dropped there for AI. The second one is obviously NVIDIA, um, not really lighting the, the world on fire. Now the beat was the beat and I want to go through it. Uh, we still beat, we still raise guidance. You're still at that level. And you know they're saying, oh, well, we didn't go up as much. Well, it's a billion dollars a beat. Like you're beating by a billion a quarter. I don't know what they want, but maybe expectations are out there. I think where NVIDIA failed, and you guys are really can comment on this yourselves. I personally think where NVIDIA failed, see the selling the day before too, and then this day, is that they didn't comment on, and nor did anyone ask a question, which I found really weird, but I'm pretty much tinfoil hat. No one asked the question, what about SMCI? Are you worried about this restatement? Do you think that they're gonna affect your business at all? And I'll tell you why it bothered me, because he was the keynote, Jensen was the keynote for SMCI's event. And they are friends. And I think you I think it's a valid question to say, hey, these guys buy a lot of chips from you. You know, are you concerned about them? You know, were they padding the books? Are they increasing demand for a reason? Um, and I wonder if that's why he was a little squirrely, because that conference call last night on uh, that he did was just an absolute disaster. Uh, on Bloomberg, as one of the guys in the community was calling him, the British Kramer. Um, if you are on the list to be in the community, just keep your eyes open. You will get a um, you will get an invitation. I am going through them all right now. Just and if you are interested, just get on it. Uh, we'll go from there. But now you have this DTL. Let's get back to it. Now you broke. You're below the 55. I lost institutional support on the video. It makes me sad. I really don't know what else to say it. It's not happy. It's not a happy time for me. Um, I like the company a lot. I think it's going to do exceptionally well over, over time. But I have to look at that um, and say that that's just, it's not great. Now, there's a couple other things that I would do with this chart as well. So I'm going to clean all this off. I would do the same thing here where I would drop that peak VWAP and go, you know, for lack of a technical term, go crap. We broke. Like you don't, you don't really want to break there, right? Like I, I don't want that. And, and that's the thing about this. You, you have to look at what's actually happening, right? We can all be delusional, okay? You know, and, and look at things. And you can see that right here as well, where that point of control is unable to get above that. And we saw that over and over again, right? We can delude ourselves and we can tell ourselves, you know, what's actually happening. I'm still waiting for Giselle to call, but you know, the chances are slim and none. But if you look at this, you cannot get over that, okay? And you couldn't get over that point of control, and that's from here. That was a kind of a tell, wasn't it, when you look back at it? And technical analysis is always so beautiful after the fact, isn't it? But when you understand that that's a big point, that's also a point, then you can see the weight here. So our goal is going to be able to get through PCE tomorrow and then look at tech, but we expect tech to continue to be weak. What we did today was just take advantage of that when we could and just short a bunch of tech. I shorted AMD, Micron, these were all just little trades on the day, uh, but they all worked and we all were able to take money out. Tesla, watch the 210 level. Once you broke that, that was it. 210's a big number for that, for whatever reason. No matter what side of 210 you're on, you, it seems to be your demarcation line and you broke it today. Anything that rallies and then drops like that, you wanna watch. What I would leave you with is this earnings for tonight, Lulu. This actually was something that I was trading after hours, which is one of the reasons why this video is gonna go out just a little bit late. Whenever you have a name that has bad news, which this did, because it guided lower, just remember this, you watch this one part again, you have bad news and you close over the previous close on a five minute or something longer, you wanna pay attention because that's telling you that it's either expected or it's not as bad as they thought it was going to be. And what this did was it moved higher. Here, let me show you this. If I say something, I like showing the timestamps. I just, at least that way you can see what we actually did. So all I'm telling them is after hours, I saw this and I bought the bar. Once I bought the bar, the retest comes in, the rally. And then what I'm seeing is I get a doji right here and you can see the timestamp right here as well. And I'm just looking at it and going, okay, I've made my money. I don't know, I can't get on the call right now. I have other things to do. And I just blew it out. But when you see these tests right in here and you get over these levels, up, retest, right? That's what you're looking for. And once you say it, that's it. You just put the trades on. 
I think what you're seeing here is a position and we have two more to go over where they're like, okay, we get it. It's it's a pig, but how much, you know, how long are yoga pants going to stay down? And I'm not sure. I would watch that. And I'd certainly watch that 55 tomorrow and see if you can get through that. That's exactly, if you go and take a look at that, that's exactly where you stopped, which was another thing that kind of got me. I'm like, okay, the 55's right there. I just ran right up into it. I stopped. Let's just get out of this. We've been unable to get above that for, you know, since about March, right? Since you broke. So once I see that, I'm like, okay, institutional level and they can't break it. Time to move on. The other one that we should go over so that you're prepped for tomorrow is Alta. Uh, this was a dumpster flyer. Absolutely. Absolute dumpster fire. Um, not only did they miss, I'm wondering if this is a kitchen sink quarter. Kitchen sink quarters are change in management or change in ownership to some extent. And they tell the company to throw everything at it. Meaning when Bezos stepped down, they had a really bad quarter because the new CEO could come in and look like he's doing things, right? Buffett bought this company recently. It's very possible that he's advising them and saying, write everything off and guide lower and let's fix the inventory issues and let's go forward. It's very possible something like that is happening. He just started a position in this. You're gonna to wanna to watch this tomorrow. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this name. It's another one. Dell, now this could be the third issue that we have uh, in regards to AI. You're trying to trade up, but this 114, for whatever reason, has just been very, very brutal. Now, I'll show you how to look at these levels and determine it. And I, this is how I looked at it. They came out of the gate. They were good. Their margins were decent. They beat. But even on top of that, their cloud was up over 80%. So that's good, right? Now, if you take these peaks and you just drop on these peaks, what you'll see is you'll start seeing things. Like even if you just took a look here and you said, okay, well, I'm interested in that bar because that bar is kind of a control bar right there. And you see that, right? Because once that bar broke, that was it, changing trend. So you're looking for these control bars as well. But you start marking them down and what you're seeing is you're unable to get above or close above that 114. Now you got over it tonight, and then as soon as you got over it, that was kind of it. So you're going to want to watch that tomorrow. I'd be very interested to see how this plays out. But the conference call was anything but, you know, exciting. That's it.